Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is linear algebra. Today, what is a basis? And basically, the ba a basis of a vector space will be a notion of dimension. Um, so let us just jump right into it. So a basis should be kind of kind of kind of thought of as certain ways to write to write a vector. So I have uh, a, a, and also for pictures. I have a, uh, a vector which I call V, which is this red one. It's always pointing towards the uh, um, southwest. And in all of these pictures, I've chosen a different basis, as we will learn later. But for now, I've just chosen two different vectors, a black one or two different coordinates, a black one and a blue one. So the black one is going in this direction here. And there's a blue one going in this direction. Well, roughly, and it's going roughly in this direction. Yeah, well, not really, but but kind of, you know. Um, and there will be something slightly different here, and we'll come, go go to this in a second. But here I have just two vectors. So these are called Cartesian coordinates, um, standard vectors, and this is just something, whatever. Two vectors that work, and you realize I can write this vector v. Um, in these coordinates by, well, my vector V, by the way, in these coordinates is I go one unit in, so I get, go negative, oh, sorry, I go negative one unit in the direction of the black one, and I go negative a half of, in the direction of, uh, of the blue one. And this determines my vector. Here, it's different. I could go, for instance, um, I, I can go one unit in the direction of the black vector, and then three over two units in the direction of the, so this is one and this is three over two, units in the direction of the uh, blue vector. Um, so here I would write down the tuple minus one, minus one over two, and here I would write down the tuple one and three over two, but I still get the same vector. So a basis is kind of cho a choice of how to express a vector. And to make this really uh, even more extreme, let me let me uh, show you a different basis, which is or a different ways a way to express a vector, which is sometimes called polar coordinates. So in this case, I don't even really have a vector anymore, but it's an isomorphic description. So in this case, I I'd express my vector v by just looking at its radius. So how far is it away from? So I have my radius r. So how far is it away from the uh, from the origin, and by the angle it forms? Look, so whatever, theta. And this completely determines my vector. It's a slightly strange description, but in some in some uh, vector space, as a morphic to to the R two vector space I'm discussing here, this actually is a completely valid description. It's called po polar coordinates. This determines your vector on the nose. And um, I haven't done the calculation here, but, but in this case, you would again get two numbers uh, in coordinates. You will get some radius and you get some, some angle. And again, there's no way to do it this way. You can also measure the angle the other way around and you would get, get a new way of doing it. Uh, this has no name, but that's kind of convention anyway. So polar coordinates, in some, at, at one point, someone decided in mathematics, everything goes anti-clockwise. Um, but this is just a, just a decision. You can also measure the, the, the angle clockwise. And you would get a different way to express your vector uniquely. And all of these are equally valid. Right? So if I'm only interested in expressing V, all of these four possibilities are good. None of them is better than the other, and that's kind of formulated in the uh, in the in the axiom setup of a basis. A basis is, is something where you can uniquely write down your vector in terms of the basis. Okay, and the two crucial notion that we will see will be linear dependent or linear independence and spanning. And I'm doing it the in, in the opposite way here. I'm instead of discussing spanning, I discuss not spanning. Instead of discussing linear independence, I discuss linear dependent. 
Okay, the same picture, basically the same picture as before. We are still in R2. And I have my red vectors kind of pointing to the uh, southwest. But now I have three chosen vectors. I have a black one, kind of points in this direction. And in all pictures, it's the same. I have a blue one, points in this direction. And I have a green one, let's say the points in this direction. And the question is, can I still write my vector v in terms of those three vectors? And yes, I can. The problem is, or really the problem is, I can do it in infinitely many ways. Before there was one unique way of doing it, right? I, I, I can only go one and minus one. I could go in the opposite direction, so I can kind of swoop the order, but that's basically it. But here are infinitely many ways of doing it, right? So I've illustrated some of them. For example, I could go a certain amount in the blue direction and then a certain amount in the green direction. I could go uh, in the black direction. I could go a little bit in the green direction and then a little bit in the blue direction. And I would still end up uh, at my vector. So in, in coordinates, whatever. You have kind of too many coordinates to write down. I could do any mixing. I could go a certain amount in the black, uh, black direction, a certain amount in the um, blue direction, and then a certain amount in the green direction. And even those numbers are not unique. I can go a certain amount in a completely different direction, but still black. A certain amount, but different amount, but still the black direction. A blue and green. I get completely different looking kind of ways to express my vector. And this is really bad. So that's something we don't like. So linear dependence means you have too much information. You have choices that you would need to make. And that's something you don't like. Kind of on the flip side, spanning is exactly the opposite. Uh, not spanning is exactly the opposite. You have not enough information. So here I have two vectors, a bl blue one, a black one, and a blue one, but they're they're lying in the same, in, in on the same, um, uh, uh, they're, they're linear dependent. So that they span the same subspace, and indeed you have no way. You have absolutely no way to. Uh, to express my vector v, which is still pointing in this direction. There's no way to express v. I have a new vector, which is kind of pointing in this direction. I call it v prime. And there's also no way to reach v prime. There's, there's no way. You're only allowed to go in those two directions. It's a straight line. It's kind of a, a little bit tilted straight line, but it's a straight line. So you can't, you can't go away. Right? If you go a certain amount in direction black and then a certain amount in direction blue, you're still on the same line. So there's no way to express V or V prime. Um, if you're lucky, and let's say black and black and blue would be on the same line as V, then you could express V. Okay, could happen, but you will still always find a vector which you can't express. So you can't express V prime again for the same reason. Um, here's a three-dimensional example. So in, in three dimensions, if I say so here was two-dimensional, so this is R2. And this is R3, of course. Uh, I could have three vectors, which are a little bit hard to see, but there's a black one, there's a green one. Standard co that's not a green one. Uh, standard coordinates. And there is a blue one, which is kind of pointing in this direction. Standard coordinates. And what you realize is that they span a volume. So those things here before, they, they didn't span a volume in the sense that they didn't span a well, volume, two-dimensional volume, right? An area of a surface, an area. They spend a volume and lin it's, yeah, and these just don't. And if they spend a volume, they can reach everything, basically. Here's an example of a non-spanning one. Now everything collapses here on the, they lie in, on the same plane, this is really bad. Um, so again, this would be not spanning. You couldn't reach a vector, let's say, uh, that would point somewhere in this direction. So upwards, I mean. So there's some angle here. Um, you just couldn't reach it. So they're not spanning. Not spanning means you don't have enough information. They, they, they kind of, in some sense, they're bad position. Kind of lie on the same, whatever, on the same line or in the same plane or whatever, whatever, in whatever kind of dimension you are. And it's again, pr a problem 
this is clearly bad. I mean, you, you can't write vectors at all, some of them. That's clearly bad. And the basis is kind of exact. So this is kind of not enough information. This is too much information. And the basis is exactly the intersection. You, have, you don't have too much information, and you don't have not enough information. So um, formal definition, you just have some set of, of let's say, finite of some vector space, and it's called linear independent. Um, uh, so linearly independent, that was this one. You have you don't have too much information. In other words, if you if your vectors sum up to zero, you only have the trivial solution. Um, it's called spanning. If you can write every vector as as a linear combination of your chosen basis. So this one, you have enough information, you don't have not enough information. And if both apply, you call it the basis. That's the whole point. It's exactly the right intersection of having exactly the right amount of information. And that's it. That's 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 the point. It's every vector can now, can now be uniquely expressed in your basis. And this just means in your basis, you get a tuple for every vector. So in each entry of the tuple would be one of those lambda i. Okay. So b1 up to bn, and each one of those entries would be a lambda i. And what you also get is the two bases always have the same size. And this size is called the dimension of b. Okay. The dimension is the number of, uh, the, the minimal number of information you need to pinpoint a vector in your vector space. Let me give you two more examples what a dimension, what dimension really means. I mean, dimension is, um, let's say you have this thing given here in R3 and um, here are the coordinates. So this is how we would, there is some, some parameter u which runs um, in, in a certain set. So there's a variable u and this variable determines, the rest is just some numbers. The variable determines the circle. So this actually is of dimension one because I only need one coordinate to determine it. Right? So it's a one dimensional thing. Not in a linear sense, but from the linear sense, you would generalize it to, to some more like curved or smooth sense like this one. So this would be a dimension of a manifold for the expression, whatever. Um, so it's the same idea. So dimension is you have exactly the right information to pinpoint something down, um, to pinpoint something. And um, yeah, in this case, you just need one coordinate, one variable. Although it lives in R3, you just need one variable. Here's another example. And here are two variables, u and v. It still lives in R3, this donut-like shape called the torus. And this thing is of dimension. Um, it, I, I just cut it to make it uh, easier to see, but it, it is really this donut like shape. So it's kind of close thing. And there are two coordinates to nail it down. So it's two dimension. Okay, so let me wrap up. So what is the basis and what is dimension? Uh, a basis is kind of the exact right amount of information you need in, in a vector space to pinpoint to, to really uniquely write any vector in your vector space. You, you, you're not overcounting, so you, you don't have too much information and you're not undercounting. You don't, there are no vectors that you can't write. And the dimension is then just kind of, you write down a vector in coordinates, the dimension would be, so you only need one coordinate here and one coordinate is u and you only need I need two coordinates here, and it would be u v. So this is exactly the coordinate vector you write down. You count the number of uh, entries, and that's your dimension. Okay, I hope this was reasonably helpful, and I hope to see you next time.